Hello, guys and gals. Now, here's a sign, the desk sign that you saw Eric make on a previous video. And since we make two different kinds, I wanted you to show this one, and then now I'm going to show you how I make another one. It's, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's not quite as thick, but it's just as good a desk sign. So that's what this video is going to be about. Now, here's the, here's the board that's already cut. We've already gone ahead and routed the, the letters in here because that's what you saw Eric do on the first video. So that part of it is done. And here's going to be the base for it. And this is just a piece of wood that's a little bit bigger than, than what, the, what the desk sign is going to be. And what I did is I just kind of hit the corners on the sanding disc so that it put a little chamfer on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I mount this how this will be mounted once it's completed. So I'll show you how I mark it and how I mount it. Here's the, this is, this is a two inch board, it's two inches wide, and this is a one inch wide ruler. And what I do is I go to the back of the board, and I'll, I'll show you more about that when I'm sanding them off, and then I just draw a line somewhere around two inches in from the end. And since this is a two inch ruler, I just, use this as kind of a guide and I just make them mark two inches in and here's where I'm going to drill this is a this is a spot to drill that's on center two inches in and here's a screw that I'm going to use this is, is kind of like a it's actually a drywall screw but it works very well in wood and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the drill press I'm going to drill and countersink these and then I'm going to put this screw in where it just barely comes through the surface. So that when it just barely comes through the surface, and I take this sign and I put it in position, and then I tap on it, it's going to leave a mark where the screws are here, so the screws will line up. And that's the main reason I do that. So I'll take this now and go over to the drill press. Okay, here's our drill press operation. This is, this is just a little bench drill press. Pretty handy. We've got bigger ones, but this is this is pretty handy. So that place that you saw me mark in that one inch by two inch dimension, I'm just drilling a hole right down through it. Now I'm drilling from the back, and I'll show you later on when I start sanding, I'll show you what that's about. And then after I get the hole drilled, and we change it, and you, you kind of have to use your own judgment on the size drill that you're going to use. It depends on the size screw that you're going to use. Uh, don't use a screw any bigger than is absolutely necessary. And then uh, after you drop a tool a time or two, then you get in and ready to do the, the countersink. And all we're doing is countersink. Now you can set this by the depth stop if you want to. I don't. I just kind of eyeball it. I look at it like that and I say, okay, the screw is going to, the head of the screw is going to disappear there. That's all I care about. You can go deeper if you want to. It doesn't really matter. But that's really all you need to do. That's bring it closer, Dad. That's really all you need to do okay. as far as drilling and countersinking the holes. Okay, I got the hole drilled, and these are the screws. I'm going to use a screwdriver, electric screwdriver, to drive those in. Now I'm going to drive them in where they just start to come through. You can just see where it's just starting to come through there. And I'll put both of them in. I could do this with a hand screwdriver, but electric tools are just so much better. Now you can see where the screws are just starting to come through there. Now, this is how the sign will fit on there. And all I do is I hold it and I eyeball it so that I've got it about the same at both ends and the same on the side. And then I tap it like that. So I know where the screws are going and you can see the little points here. Now, if they're slightly off center, I'm going to adjust that when I drill the holes. But I've got the, I've got the marks to go by. So when I drill these holes, that means they're going to line up with these screws. And that's all it is to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to go ahead and go over and drill these. And then I'm going to complete the sign. I'm going to take the screws back out and I'm going to chamfer this board so you can see how I do that. So uh, bear with me a minute and I'll be right back. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now, I want to chamfer this base. 
and by chamfer, this is the 45 degree chamfer tool with a half inch bearing on it. I just wanted you to see, I've got it set up in the router, but I just wanted you to see it. This is a standard bit. Uh, you can buy it from us or you can buy it at any, any uh, good hardware store. So I just wanted to show you the bit that I was using so you'll know. So I've got it all set up in the router. I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer the back with a slight chamfer, and then I'm gonna turn the board over and reset the router a little deeper and chamfer it all in one. But I'm not gonna stop the, I'm not gonna stop the, the uh, film in the meantime. I'm just gonna do this all as one film. chamfer that oh, maybe an eighth of an inch. It wouldn't hurt to have it a little deeper now that I see it. So I'm going to go ahead and reset it and go in just a tad deeper. Well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Just you turn the, the ring. Yeah, just keep the camera running. Yeah, just go in just a tad deeper. Just put a little bit more of a chamfer on it than it has. Yeah, that's a little better. I should have I should have set that to begin with, but I didn't. So now that's just a little bit of a chamfer on the back. Now this is going to be a pretty deep chamfer on the front, just so it'll dress it up a little bit. So now that base is done completely. All I have to do is there isn't even any sanding to do on it, although I will do some more sanding when I get ready to, to put it together. I'll smooth it up just a little bit, but it's done except for putting the black around the edges. Now this, now you saw the way Eric did the first one. Uh, he did that with a router, and you can do this one the same way. You can get that spiral router bit, and you could go in and cut this out just like Eric did on that first one. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set up my, my Hawk scroll saw. I'm going to bring it out and get it on camera. I never have, uh, never have showed you anything that I do with a scroll saw. They're, they're a real good tool. Most of you guys have got one, so you know what they are. But for you folks who don't have one, that you want to make something like this with the scroll saw, I'll show you how I do that. Okay, now we're set up to do the scroll saw work. This is my Hawk scroll saw, and I've got a round blade on here so I don't have to worry about which direction I'm going. Most of you scroll saw guys will know that you can use a round blade on your scroll saw and so that you don't have to continue moving your, your piece. You can just go in any direction that you want to. And this is my Hawk scroll saw. I paid 1500 bucks for this thing a few years ago, but it's, uh, it's a good tool. We don't use it a lot, but for something like this, it's an excellent tool. So I'll just go ahead and show you how I do this. Now, if for whatever reason, this blade breaks in the middle, uh, we're going to shut the camera off and come back, fix the blade, and then start back up again, just in case. But you'll know because you'll hear it. So I've got a, a good magnifying glass up here, what I'm looking through. Uh, you can show it if you want to, Eric. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking through this magnifying glass, and it has a light on it. Uh, this is really a, a nice scroll saw. So I'm ready to turn it on and start working now. Are you ready, son? Do it. All right. Now there's a... There's a thing that I could go on here and put something down on the board that would keep it from moving. But just like that. Okay, what you saw there was the blade just came out of the holder on the top. Uh, and it does that sometimes. It's uh, I don't know why. Maybe I just didn't get it tight enough. But we'll just continue right where we left off. As 
again, that's the nice thing about this round blade. Is it'll, it'll cut in any direction. And I don't need to... I don't need to continually move the piece in order to get the blade to cut where I want it to cut. And the thing about this, you guys that have one of these, you know, you don't push it too hard. A lot of guys saw a lot faster than I do. I haven't used it that much. But in most cases, I just take it kind of easy and just, uh, I've already got most of what I want cut, I've got cut. So I just kind of guide it through. Just keep it going slow and easy and be careful not to, not to cut into those letters. If I go in and nick them, uh, they kind of look bad, so I just kind of take it easy. It only takes, on something like this, it's, a, it's about a foot long, and it only takes maybe three or four minutes to cut through it, so I just don't, I try not to get in a hurry on it. Because at my age, I try not to get in a hurry on anything. But this saw does a nice job. If you can afford to buy one, but I, the funny thing is, I've got a DeWalt. Sears makes a nice one. You can get a good scroll saw for just a few hundred dollars. It's just I saw a guy at a show one time demonstrating this one, and I decided that's what I had to have. It was fourteen hundred dollars. One of them is he didn't have one at the show, and I drove all the way to Denver to get this one. But that, that's me. I just saw something I wanted and decided I was going to have it. But as you can see, it doesn't take any special skill to do this. It does take a little patience. But it'll do a, it'll do a nice job. Now there are guys that use this scroll saw and other scroll saws to cut these things out complete. Uh, right from scratch, they cut names or keychains and all kinds of stuff. I don't use mine for that. I just use mine to help me make the sign that I want to make. If I were to sit down and really learn how to use this thing, I could probably make a lot of pretty good stuff. But now what we've got here is we've got the completed, I'll turn the saw off, I thought I'd turn it off. And uh, we've got the completed upper part of this uh, of this sign. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut everything down and come back in a few minutes and show you the rest of it. Okay, I got the uh, got the scrolls all done. So that's a big piece of scrap we can throw away. So this, in effect, is really it's finished and it's ready to go together. There's just a few little touches that I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the edges and spray the the surface of it and uh, then I'm going to take it to the sander just like Eric did on that first uh, on that first uh, desk sign that he did it's going to be basically the same but I'll show you how I do it it's just exactly the same as Eric did so what we're going to do from here we're going to shut down or, or we'll be right back and show you how we sand this okay now we're going to spray these just like Eric did on the first one he did, wouldn't hurt to get the back of it just to be sure I get the chamfer all the way around. Doesn't take much ink to do this. And all I'm doing is just getting the edges and the chamfer, and that's it. So that part of it is done. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to bring this manager over. Now on this one, I only need to get the two sides and the top. I don't need to get the bottom because it's going on the base and nobody will ever see it. So that's all sprayed. From here we'll go to the sander. Okay, now we're ready to sand these off. And I'll show you, I'm going to sand the back first. Put cross grain on that. It doesn't have to be a 
real smooth sand as well as it's even. I'll just sand just enough, just enough to clean it up. be careful if you don't stand too much off in one spot or on one end it would make it a little bit tricky. Pretty hard to do. That's, uh, that's all you need to do right there. And then on the front, you stand with the grain, just like Eric did on that first one. Except this is the base, it's not the side itself. All you do is just take them up if you get it down to where the ink is gone, and that's all you want to do. And you can see there, the grain shows just fine, and the ink is all gone. And this, this is the sign itself, and we'll do the same thing. Stand the back of it, sort of cross grain. Just enough to where the ink disappears. Bring out the grain of the wood. And then we'll go with the grain because this is going to be something that's on a desk. So you want it to show pretty, pretty nice. And then same thing that Eric did on his when he was showing you that. We're going to sand this off. Get it just about where it's completed. And then we'll put the belt cleaner on here and clean all of the gunk off the belt like if there's a little ink residue on there we're going to clean that off and we'll put it back on there just enough to clean it up good and that's really that's really all there to it I'll show you both of these. This is, this is a completed sign. All I have to do is put it together and put a finish on it. And that's really all there is to it. So next next thing you see, well, you see me putting a finish. You'll see me putting it together and then I'll put a finish on it. Okay, now we're going to put it together. So just basically the same as I did when I marked it. I put the screws in and I put them in just far enough to where they just start to come through. I can just feel it there starting to come through. And then I know the holes are lined up because I drilled them so that they would be. And then all you got to do, can you see this son? Yep, I got it. All you got to do, just run the screw in. Now if you want to put a drop of glue someplace before you pull that screw down tight. If you wanted to, you can, but there's really no reason to because that, that's solid as a rock. And if somebody ever wants to take it apart, they can, but there's no reason to. So and the only, the main thing to remember on these is to be pretty careful that you get the holes lined up both in, in the top part and the base so that it goes on straight so that you're not crooked. And that's, uh, that's really all you have to remember. Now we're going to put a finish on this, and then we're going to set it side by side with the one that Eric did so you can see them both, and that'll be it. Okay, now we're putting a finish on it. And this is that same, that same Krylon. Got it. Crystal clear. And all you got to do is just say, you know, eight or ten inches away. Now I'm going to just put one coat on this, but the more coats of this stuff you put on, you'll find, you probably already know this, but the more coats of this stuff you put on, the better your product looks when you, when you get done with it. But that's all I'm going to do, and I'm going to, now I'll show you both of them side by side. All right, children, uh, and I say children because compared to me, most of you are children. Uh, there's the two desk signs. This is the one that Eric did. This is the one that I just finished up that you saw in this video. And uh, 
that's really all there is to making desk signs, and it's a very, very popular item. You know, a lot of people have desks, and a lot of people like to buy these for gifts. Uh, we don't make as many as we should, or as we could, because we don't have them listed on our website yet, but I think probably uh, we'll rectify that. But just wanted to let you know that uh, we thoroughly enjoy making these videos for you to guys, show you guys what we do. That's, that's what we like to do. Uh, Eric happens to be behind the camera on this one, and I'm sitting here yakking at you. But uh, you've seen so many of our videos now that you know that we really enjoy doing this. So uh, we're going to shut this one down. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, before we leave, Dad, yes. what would you charge for something like one of these? Well, they're in the, the, like this, this size with this l amount of letters on it, somewhere in the $20 neighborhood. If it gets longer, uh, it'd be so much more per letter, probably 3 or $4 more per letter. It could get up to a $39.95, even $49.95 if it go bigger letters. But at one-inch letters, about a foot long, 8 to 10 inches long, somewhere around $20. Okay, good. I was just curious. Okay. Okay. We'll see you all down the road. Bye. Bye. Okay, just uh, this is going to be a little, little P.S. Uh, just going to add on that if you're watching this video and you haven't, you haven't watched a lot of our videos and you're not aware of it, at the end of this video, if you click on the subscribe button, then YouTube, and put your email address in, YouTube will automatically send you a notice every time we post a new video. So if you like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe so that uh, every time we post a new video, we might get a little silly and, and make four or five of them. And uh, if you don't want to miss them, if you want to be sure to watch them, subscribe to them. That way you're sure that you're going to get them. So that's just our little PS. Thank you. Bye.